This is Deborah Atkinson, and you're listening to Flipping 50, where I share how to eat, how to move, and how to change your thoughts so you can flip 50 with the energy and the vitality that you want in this second half. And I've got a really special episode today. It's just me, no guest, but I'm diving into a little self-reveal, self-disclosure for sure, about something that was really uncomfortable for me. And it made me realize that I too, fitness, health, wellness, expert, professional, coach to others, still can't let myself slip back into complacency. Everybody, all of us, me included, have to continue to work on habits forever. You know, habits, there's a saying that habits take three weeks to form, and that's a myth. The real research on habits is that it takes 66 days to actually form a real habit that becomes automatic, like brushing your teeth. Like You wouldn't leave the house without brushing your teeth unless you're really, really busy or stressed. But things like that, that first five minutes when you get up in the morning, the very first thing you do, probably automatic. They get out of bed, maybe you go to the restroom, and then you head for the coffee pot. At least that's my habit. So what happened to me is I realized some of the habits that I've let slip. I've let myself off the hook thinking, well, I'm in good shape. I've been doing this all my life, right? So I don't, if I don't do it today, that's not a big deal. Or if the hour hike that I desperately needed turns into just 20 minutes of a squeezed in, more rushed than fun workout, then it's really okay. But you know, when you're busy in any way, for me, when I'm an entrepreneur working at home and I'm driven, I'm self-motivated, there is always that one more thing to do. There's, there's this, just one more thing. I'm going to get this done before I take a break. And pretty soon it's noon and I can be in my pajamas and I can do that because I do a lot of audios. I write a lot. I coach by phone and I get a lot of work done, but it's not at my greatest power, not at my greatest potential because I would do so much better with break after a couple of hours for some exercise to come back refreshed and do it all over again, but better with fewer errors, more productivity, more creativity better problem solving. So I'm going to tell you a story about what happened to me just last week, but I'm going to end this in a way that I'm going to ask you to join me on a challenge I'm giving myself for the last two months of 2018. When I was driving to the airport last week, I had the strangest feeling. I cannot remember a time, perhaps because it's never happened, When I just got on a plane and went somewhere without a schedule. Now, don't panic. I didn't go crazy. I had a hotel room booked. I knew where I was going and I had a car rented, but I wasn't going to deliver a presentation. I wasn't going to deliver a hug. I wasn't going to attend a lecture. No one would ever know if I showed up or not. I was going into this total black hole of nothing to expect, nothing to measure, and it was really uncomfortable. I was heading to the Huntsman World Senior Games in St. George, Utah, and I have posted about it many, many videos, all included many of them in a blog post. I'll link to that here in the show notes, and it had great purpose, but once I got there on the ground, I had no agenda. I was just going to witness it. Having done a podcast with the CEO, Kyle Case, and having been a guest on his podcast, I was intrigued for sure. And I decided that I was going to capture some inspiring moments, and they're coming up, by the way, to share with the Flipping 50 podcast audience and the blog audience. We share a common mission, and I wanted to see the games and help spread the word. 
and that was all well and good. I had no appointments, no schedule, no mandatory time restrictions, but I was uncomfortable. Seriously, how many times a day do I have to check my watch, make sure I'm on schedule for my next client or my interview, that I'll hit my deadline for the next article, that I'll have my team have what they need from me next to do their job. And I was missing it? Are you kidding me? How often do I wish for a day clear of appointments to focus on a project for a big block of time? Or how often do I, or you, crave a weekend free of to-do lists and errands to catch up or get ahead? Someone is laughing their, you know what, outfit that. I had created it. I was staring at a few days just like that. Totally uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable with a lack of schedule ahead of me for the next three days. I do have boundaries that I honor. You know, I avoid over scheduling and I draw sharp boundaries on my time off. I don't do evening appointments or weekend coaching unless it's rearranging that just can't be avoided. And yet I was at a total loss. I kept feeling like I needed to be doing something. At the end of my first day, I realized that it was worse than that. I was looking for reasons not to do things, fun things. I was looking for boundaries. At one point on a hike to explore St. George's beauty, and it's breathtaking, by the way, if you've never been there, please go, but a low fence like I'm talking 12 or 14 inches from the ground to its full height, threatened me. It was going to keep, or it was there to keep tortoises in, in a reserve area and safe. And it was not to keep humans out for crying out loud. It took an adventurous 10 year old ahead of me to show me the way. Minutes later, As I looked at vast red rocks just begging to be climbed, I didn't see anybody else on them, so I thought, well, that must be off limits. But there were no signs saying so. I just assumed. I finally started out on the hike toward those red rocks, and I was off the grid literally and figuratively. It was just, you know, an area waiting to be explored. So I went, and... No steps, no path, no people ahead of me, just blazing a trail. I scrambled up five or six of these huge red rocks to stand at the top with nothing to see or do or feel. Just there to be and look. And yet I was still really uncomfortable. Like a kid playing hooky who keeps looking over her shoulder. I felt like I was going to get caught, so I wasn't completely enjoying the freedom. I looked down and realized I didn't have my watch on, and that never happened. I had no idea how I did it, but was glad I had. After all, I had no place to be. No one was expecting me. You know, there were half a dozen venues I could visit at the senior games, but I didn't have to. I didn't need a watch to tell me I was hungry. I was... I I wasn't concerned with minute or distance or heart rate on my hike, so I just gave in. There was no measure of the breathtaking scenery and the way it was filling me up. But I wondered, am I hiding behind a schedule? You know, I frequently tell my clients, both women in midlife and the fitness professionals that I work with, that structure provides freedom. I may have taken that a little bit too far. Was there so much structure in my life that I've forgotten how to use free time wisely? When I began coaching in 1995, the kind of coaching around figuring out why a piece of life or pieces of it aren't quite coming together, even though things are obviously important to you and you're committed to them, This sort of challenge happened to other people I was coaching. Now the coach becomes a student. This is exactly the kind of framework I might give somebody. Get off the grid for two to three days and break out of your have to, your shoulds, and cramming so much into your days that you forget why you're doing it. Kids have forgotten how to use free time, and possibly so had I. 
It's a thing we actually began to notice about children a couple of decades ago. They've gotten so used to constant stimulation, those millennials, those millennials like mine, that they don't know how to entertain themselves. We gave them Game Boy and iPad and games to tell them what to do. And there are fewer and fewer markers and tablets that aren't electronic or building toys. Kids can explore. Sit them in front of a movie because it's so much easier. But then when there's not that, boredom sets in really fast and they can't entertain themselves. So I began wondering, was I a victim of that too? So I decided to be uncomfortable. I decided to do what I wanted when I wanted to for three days. And it was hard. While I was running on my second morning in St. George, I realized that it had been 25, maybe 30 years since I'd just gone for a run. You know, I just set a time and didn't really care where I went. So I ran to parks where I stumbled on the Huntsman World Senior Games women's softball events, past the 5K and the half marathon finishers. And I noticed more than usual, I noticed things. You know, we coaches refer to it as being present, being in the moment. I lost it apparently because having found it, there's a distinct difference. I noticed the view you know, hard not to in St. George and the people on the path. I was tuned in and present, not focused on getting it done and getting back or finishing an interval, not simultaneously doing something else. I quote research by Ellen Langer frequently, and I'll link to a book you may be interested in if what I'm about to share intrigues you. I came back from that trip looking younger. You heard me right. I actually felt myself looking younger. You and I know we are pretty hard on ourselves, right? Our worst critics, especially perhaps at this time in our lives when things are changing more rapidly, if you're not matching your hormone needs to changes that you make, you know, thinning hair, more pronounced wrinkles, sudden lines around the neck, you know, crepey skin around your legs, cellulite some days, not others. But I actually felt like I aged backwards in those three days. Maybe it was interviewing 94 and 84-year-olds to start my trip. Possibly it was the abundance of adults older than my 54 at the games. Maybe it was seeing 96-year-old Charlotte's results and the six swim races she competed in. Maybe it was the clean air and the perfect 70, 75 degree weather, but I felt lighter, happier, and like I had fewer crow's feet without Botox. I have to give a nod to St. George and the perfect climate over my stay. A sunny 75 with low humidity was perfection. Sunny works for me. It wasn't the food, and you heard it from me. I ate junk food <laughs> two nights in a row. Well, the closest I've come to sabotage in quite some time. The hotel restaurant served what it served, and I'm sure I ate a combination of gluten, dairy, white flour, and anything but healthy fat. And after two nights, I couldn't take it any longer. Because food shows up in energy and a glowing complexion or not pretty quickly. And that also means you can turn it around in days if you want to, by the way. I attribute my energy and the way I feel changed after that trip to these things that I learned. I need time every day carved out for exercise. I need time outdoors in sunshine. I defined really what healthy food is and you should define it for you and reinforce what it feels like to honor it. Time spent around people who are the very opposite of complainers, whiners, and looking for reasons they can't. They're looking for open windows if a door closes. Those are my people. They're people who think the best about life and want to get better no matter where they are now. Believing that there is a greater purpose for each of us. Nurturing the human body and the spirit is part of serving that greater purpose. Purpose may be served with a to-do list, but the energy and the inspiration to do it 
is served by staying away from it regularly. Every sidewalk or hallway or sidelines I sat on or walked on during those few days, people exchanged hellos, good mornings, and smiles. Every single person. The fact that I noticed that even is something to acknowledge because it's not true of every day. Even in Boulder, where I call home, and I believe that truly people are happier here, from the athletes to the volunteers to the family members cheering and the community members in St. George, it was a truly unique environment. Physical activity changes people. It changes lives. Changing the way you think about physical activity changes it most. It's not about a scale. It's not even about a body fat measure, and you know I promote the value of body fat knowledge over weight alone. It's not punishment. It's a gift. It's not a deficit so that you can eat cake. It's a reward for a body that simply is meant to move. For the men and women at the Huntsman World Senior Game, it's a starting line. Not to compete against somebody else, not to win versus lose, because in many sports, that's how it's labeled, but to win or to win, finding new strengths, exploring new activities, being a part of something greater. For some I met, it was something that led to losing 70 pounds, 75 pounds, and most likely finding herself again. For others, it was a dose of something that she needed for mental health as much as physical health. For some, it's social. For some, it was far more motivating to get stronger and build endurance than to simply lose weight, but that happened too. For some, it began as a family challenge and turned in to something exhilarating. You'll see it all in the full blog at Flipping 50 of the moments that I'll share and the link will be here. What this whole thing triggered for me was the need or the awareness of the need to change some habits. I wasn't honoring the way I use or gain energy best. I wasn't honoring the best times of day for me to create, write, connect with others, to exercise so that I could do those things. And sometimes I wasn't honoring a desire to drink less coffee and more water. It's easy to slip, and it may surprise you, but it's easy for me too. When you're in it, you're doing it regularly. It's so easy to let a day go by and skip and get caught up in work and let a much, much needed long hike slip into a 20 minute more rushed than enjoyed workout. So I'm challenging myself for the next two months, these last two months of 2018, if you're listening close to the time I've recorded. And if you're listening to this after the fact, you can still comment below the show notes at flipping50.com or comment on Instagram if you're following there. Comment about how you're going to change a habit. I'll share my process. We all have these triggers or cues. Triggers usually are related to bad habits, poor habits. Cues are related to the good ones. It's a certain cue that you have to focus on in order to follow through with a habit that you want to create. So I want to stop work and stay committed to a workout even if I don't have a race or an event coming up. But just putting the hour block on my calendar is not the cue that I need. That hour break to get up, set up, exercise, clean up, is the habit that I want, but the cue is maybe a two or three minute thing in reality. For me, I have to decide at 8 a.m. that I go get dressed, whether it's in my swimsuit, bike shorts, or running shoes. If I'm driving to the pool or doing weights at the gym, then getting into the car has to happen then. Two, that's a cue. When I'm successfully in the car on the way to the gym, that the workout, the hour is going to happen. That's not a problem then. It's the cues that get you started on the way. That's what I want you to focus on. So I have to decide that's what's going to happen. Here's what I challenge you with. Number one, tell me what habit 
you either want to commit to or that you want to stop. The committing to something is a little bit easier. Number two, tell me what you're going to focus on. What is the two or three minute cue that you're going to do or create that will ensure that you follow through on the habit that you're wanting? It can get really tough right now, right about now at this time of year with year-end excitement or extra work to stay focused on your health goals. And it doesn't have to. If you have something set in place to help you, you'll do it. Once you have your habit, share it here at flipping50.com under the blog or the podcast or at Instagram. Telling someone makes it easier to commit. And then share this with a friend and surround yourself with a community of women flipping 50 together. If this podcast was valuable, please leave a rating in iTunes. It really helps us spread the possibilities and the expectations about the way we age. And I can't wait to hear what you're going to commit to for the rest of 2018. Share your cue with me.